Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome here to Roger Williams University. Um, really appreciate that you've taken some time out of your day to come learn a little bit about our university, and we're very glad to have you here. Uh, my name is Rob Hancock. I'm on the enrollment management team here at Roger Williams University, um, and, uh, and you know, I'm really excited to talk about what makes our university unique and really give you, hopefully, a great sense of what an experience here at Roger Williams would be like. Um, I want to just introduce uh, Joe. Joe is uh, one of our admission staff. He's also the counselor of the day, so he's here all day um, to answer questions from anybody who comes in to learn a little bit about the university. So after you take your tour, if you come back, you have additional questions, want to learn a little bit more about a specific program or about the admissions process or financial aid, Joe will be here. He'll be happy to answer your questions um, and connect you. If he doesn't get, have the answer, to connect you with the right people to make that happen. Um, so I had a chance before to get to know a few of the folks in the room. I think we have uh, a couple folks that are interested in biology, I think, if that's right, some business and marketing folks, engineering perhaps. Um, so we've got a whole range of um, uh, majors and interests today, so I'm going to try to touch on those a little bit. Um, but I also want to see if there's any particular questions that you have that you want to make sure we cover in this information session. Um, at Roger Williams, we try to have, make sure that the education our students receive is really personalized. We want to take that same approach here. So does anyone have any particular questions at the start? You're going to have a chance to answer them later, ask them later. But any particular questions about programs or anything else that you want to know about? All right. Like I said, we'll come back to it as well. So if I don't cover it, if you have a question you're not sure about, we'll go back to that. Um, so <clears throat> you're here today to learn a little bit about Roger Williams and be thinking about what you know, your four-year time here at the university, or um, if you're transferring in a, uh, you know, two, three, whatever years you want to be filling in here, and then um, you're trying to think about what that experience is going to be like. You're also wondering about the admissions process, um, applications, um, you know, getting into college, what it's going to be like to be here on campus. You may not yet be thinking about what happens after, maybe a little bit, um, but that's okay. Because that's what we really focus on here at Roger Williams University. We start at the end. We think about what you're going to need during your time here on campus that is going to prepare you to have a great career and to have a successful and meaningful life. Um, and we approach that based on research. A couple years ago, the Gallup organization, who does a lot of polling around the country, um, asked 30,000 college graduates what were the key factors during their college career that helped lead to success afterwards. Uh, and they identified these six factors, professors who make a difference, opportunity to do hands-on projects, a uh, chance to have connections with mentors on campus, to be involved in activities and programs that are happening around the campus community, a chance for internships and um, really experiential learning opportunities, and a focus on preparing you for life after graduation. So these are the six factors that were critical during your college career to help you be successful afterwards. What was interesting about that poll is that only 3% of those students said they got all six of these in their college career. So these are the six things they need and only 3% said they got. Well, one of the things we did as a university is we looked at those and we said, we have all of these things on campus and really focused on making sure that they're an integral part of every student's education here. Because we want to make sure that you have a great time on campus as a student, but that when you leave, you're well prepared for your career, for your life, and all that is to follow. And that's the approach we take. Uh, today's presentation, I'm going to go through a little bit about who we are as an institution, how we approach our work, and how we're committed to your student success uh, in that process. We're also going to talk a little bit about admissions um, and the information you need to know for that process. And then also to dive into scholarships uh, and financial aid uh, information as well. Uh, this part of the presentation will be about 20, 25 minutes. Then you'll get a chance to go out with our great tour guides. They're really going to dive into a lot of the campus life, um, student life activities, things that are happening around campus. They're also going to show you all the different, a lot of the different buildings on campus as well. So I'm going to leave some of that stuff to them, but other questions we'll be able to cover here as well. Uh, so a minute ago I talked about how we're really focused on making sure that you as a student have what you need to be successful um, after you graduate. The world is changing incredibly fast. Uh, in just a, a few weeks the iPhone 10 is going to come out to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of the iPhone, which means 10 years ago smartphones, iPhones didn't even exist. 
And now there's entire industries that are centered around that. Um, social media marketing, uh, app development, um, totally changed computer science development. All of these things have changed just over the, that 10 years. And so we're focused on making sure that the education you get today is going to prepare you for the world tomorrow that you're going to walk into, but also that you get the core foundation of critical thinking, of problem solving, that you need to be versatile in the marketplace of 10, 20, 30 years down the line. It's that approach today that, that moves you forward. And we do that because it's aligned with our goal as an institution of building the university the world needs now that we are prepared to be ourselves nimble and flexible to make sure that we're meeting all of those needs of students and that those students, when they graduate, are able to meet the needs of the workforce and the community. As an institution, uh, we are, are as a university, we are a little over 6,000 students um, spread out over eight uh, schools and our division of university studies. Um, that includes our 4,000 undergraduate students, uh, our um, about 400 graduate students, about 400 law students. We have the only law school in the state of Rhode Island um, who really specializes in public interest law um, and also hands-on experiential uh, learning and, and clinical externships, um, as well as our School of Continuing Studies, uh, which services a wide range of students primarily out of our, Bristol camp uh, of our Providence campus. So we're about 6,000 students. Um, as a university, we're spread across those two campuses. Um, most of our undergraduates are based here. There are some programs that might utilize our Providence campus or are doing projects out and about the community. Um, but that's who we are as an institution. What that means is that you get the resources of a university. When you head out, you're going to see um, our wet lab in um, our, our school for marine and natural sciences, uh, where um, actually, interesting enough, just last week, fish that were raised in that wet lab by our researchers and our students were released into the New England Aquarium um, to help restock their giant fish tank. If anyone's been to the New England Aquarium, it's got that giant tank in the middle. Um, well, our researchers raised a uh, particular kind of fish to be released out in there. So we have those large resources in architecture. It's our design uh, center. Um, if you go to our um, uh, business school, you're going to see that we're enlarging the uh, facility for our CAFE program, which is a program where students manage real-world portfolios. A quarter of a million dollars students are managing and investing and trying to generate positive returns on. Um, so we have those uh, university resources, but what you won't see when you walk around campus are big lecture halls. Um, we really don't have any classes over 60 students. Most of our classes, almost 90, 95% of our classes are less than 30. Um, because we are, it's important to have that balance of those, those uh, university resources and that close personal connection. All of our classes are taught by faculty, not graduate assistants or teaching assistants. So they are experts in their field or in their profession um, and they're bringing that knowledge here uh, to campus to share with our students. Um, so you really get a chance to develop those personal connections um, to connect with those faculty that make a difference. Uh, and that's what we can offer. Um, we have, uh, you're going to see a little bit from the different schools that are available, business, humanities, arts, and education, social and natural sciences, which includes um, biology, psychology, uh, political science, anthropology, um, architecture, art, and historic preservation. Uh, our engineering, computing and construction management, um, and then our School of Justice Studies as well. Uh, our Division of University Studies houses our interdisciplinary programs, like our popular public health program uh, is based in that, in that center as well. Um, so this is kind of who we are as an institution, that university resources, but with a personal connection uh, between students, faculty, and staff. When you're thinking about your academic career at Roger Williams, we think about it in thirds. If you take all the credits you need to earn, you divide it into three parts. One is going to be your ma major requirements. What classes and courses and experiences you need to complete in order to satisfy uh, the major you're looking for. The second one, and I'm going to dive into this a little bit more in a minute, is our core curriculum, a foundation that all students get that provides support for critical thinking, problem solving, 
um, uh, cultural understanding and um, really connects them and gives them that versatility and flexibility to be successful uh, professionally, personally, and beyond. And then about a third of your classes are what we think of as personalized coursework. So it might mean that uh, you're majoring in engineering, but you also really like music, so you want to take some classes in music. Um, it might mean that you're interested in a major um, in uh, you know, science, but you might want to try and see if you also like uh, business. So you get a chance to kind of try a couple of different things. For some students that are un undecided, they're sort of exploring that, that opportunity to find what major is really going to fit for them. So those are the three main components. I'm going to talk about the core here for just a minute because it is really that foundation that all students have and it's centered around providing you the opportunity to be flexible, nimble, and prepared to, um, to really succeed. There's two central components that allow you to do that. Our five course interdisciplinary core is a series of classes um, that include things like the scientific method, um, arts, human behavior, and a couple other components that uh, really ground you in an understanding of um, the world around you and how to really leverage your specialized knowledge and your major to, to make a difference in the community around you. We also have the core concentration. This is a unique aspect of our core where students can get a complementary skill set in a different discipline than what they're majoring in. And uh, students have been really creative in how to use that. Uh, for example, we had a marine biology student who did a core concentration in photography because they were interested in underwater photography. Uh, and they actually ended up working with National Geographic. Um, we have had um, a business, we had a, a marketing and business student who was really interested in music, um, so got a core concentration uh, and then actually I think turned it into a minor, which is usually just one or two more classes in music technology, uh, using our music technology lab, uh, where you can do digital music and really analyze it. So now he's prepared to be an entrepreneur in music um, and business and combine them together for a successful career. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use that core concentration. And a lot of students, like I said, with just one or two more classes, will turn that into a minor. A few more classes, they might turn it into a major. Um, we do have a few classes that are just our core competency in, in math and uh, in writing. A lot of students can test out of that based on what they've done in high school. Um, and then we do wrap it up with an interdisciplinary senior seminar, which is really meant to bring together all of the things you've been learning across these different areas um, to prepare you for, for life after graduation. So this is a little bit about our degree. One of the things that's central to everything we're doing, all of these components, is hands-on learning. And hands-on learning is based in two premises. One, it's a great way to learn concepts and ideas that you're being taught in the classroom. But it's also really critical to build up your skill set, your resume, to be prepared to, uh, to really thrive. Starting um, for our students, hands-on learning starts before they even take their first class as a first-year student. Um, all of our first-year students uh, participate in something called Community Connections Day, uh, where they head out in the community and do uh, um, projects and initiatives with community organizations. It might be working with a um, social service agency, it might be doing research, it might be um, planting trees, it could be a whole range of things that you're doing, but that's happening before they even step into their first class. Uh, and it lays that foundation of hands-on learning and also that, uh, that foundation of um, commitment to community. For a lot of students as well, they participate in a program through the Community Partnership Center. Uh, this brings together faculty, students, and community groups to solve problems. Uh, a lot of faculty will actually align their class to include a project through the Community Partnership Center. Uh, an example, um, just yesterday there were engineering students at a fort in New Bedford um, that is uh, uh, out on the tip of the, of the peninsula in New Bedford, right on the ocean. Um, it's a fort that's been closed for many years and they're out there doing structural analysis to determine whether or not that fort could, what needs to happen for that fort to be able to reopen to the public. Um, it might also include uh, doing um, our business and marketing students and web development students actually did a project for a community arts organization who needed a new website. So they came together with those three things, came up with a marketing plan, 
um, and a new website for this organization. So it not only builds the skill set, but students actually um, can leave Roger Williams with a resume of accomplishments that they can share um, when they're starting to look for their career after college. So these things are, happen a lot for, for first and second year students. As students move on, there's a lot of other hands-on opportunities. Uh, internships, um, where you are spending um, a semester or more working closely with a business or a nonprofit organization, uh, whether it is in, uh, and really this goes across all of our disciplines. Um, student faculty research, uh, this is a really common here at a, at a university size school with predominantly undergraduates. Undergraduates get an opportunity to do research that they don't get to do at other places. Uh, there are some students actually in um, math and in uh, I think biology and psychology that are currently uh, doing research to do mathematical models of the impacts of Parkinson's disease. So they are looking at um, using mathematical models to understand how our brain works normally and how it works if you're afflicted by that disease. So that's research that students are involved in um, uh, specifically. And then there's also the opportunity to study abroad, uh, to get beyond our campus and really be involved in projects. And it's not just going to another country and experiencing the culture. Students do very active programs um, uh, in, these, in these initiatives. Uh, we have a, a group called Engineers Without Borders where students have gone down to Dominican Republic and other uh, countries to help facilitate getting clean water to the, the residents and the citizens there. Um, so their project, they can be project based um, and they can be connected with the major, uh, our architecture program. Um, students go to Florence, Italy or to Barcelona and study there. Um, and uh, biology and marine biology will sometimes go out to uh, Bermuda. So there's a whole range of programs that are built into the structure. So here at Roger Williams, we're going to challenge you to prepare you to thrive after college. We know you're going to need these in-depth um, experiences. You're going to need high quality education. We're going to challenge you, but we're also going to support you. It's, a two, it's, it's two parts to that process. Uh, today on your tour, you'll probably step into the University Library where we have a whole range of support and advising services from our peer mentoring program to tutoring um, to student advising and uh, um, also on campus we have our career and professional development. So we have a whole range of ways in which students get the support they need to be able to be successful here on campus and beyond. It starts with little things. So our peer mentoring program um, where all first year students are assigned to a peer mentor. Uh, the day before classes start in the first year, they go around and help, see, help students find where different classes are and different buildings are around campus. So that they can actually start the first day and know where they need to go. So it's a small feature that can really make a difference in getting folks prepared and connected and getting going on a successful career. Um, so that's the way we approach it. We want to make sure that you have the, the challenging curriculum, you have the um, the important projects, you're on cutting edge research, um, but that you're also getting the support you need all throughout the process to succeed and thrive. When I started um, in, the, in, in this presentation, I talked about those six main factors um, that the, the Gallup poll indicated. Uh, so those professors made a difference, hands-on projects, mentors, campus involvement, internships, um, and I said this is what we're focused on. Well, I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want you to be able to see an example of that. Um, let me let's move this back here. Whoops. Come on back. No, nope, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. No. Nope. There we go. Um, and I'm going to show you an example from our construction management program. And when you watch this, I want you to look for some of those factors. Look for those professors that are making a difference, the mentors on campus, the hands-on projects, the preparation for life after graduation. And this is just one example from one major, um, but it really applies across all of them. It's just a few minutes I just want to share. The folks from Roger Williams who have come here and work here really have fit in so well. Really smart, bright students and, and graduates but also practical, thoughtful, and really well-equipped to join the working world, particularly in construction, which is uh, you know, an intense business. Couldn't be more delighted to be here tonight. It really is an honor. The Shaman Design and Construction has provided us with uh, a relationship and been a partner to us throughout the last 17 years that I've been there. 
Roger Williams is a great technical program that balances your education with uh, a liberal arts program, which really gave me a well-rounded education. From day one was a very, very good balance of both work and hands-on. All the professors, it's clear that they have all worked in the industry, they know what they're talking about. You get to kind of see the holistic picture of what actually happens in the real world. The first step in preparation for careers is to ensure that we're teaching a curriculum that meets the needs of the industry which our graduates will serve. Roger Williams just has so many like great relationships with companies like Shawmut that there's so many opportunities for you as a student, um, especially for internships. You know, I remember my first internship, I had no prior experience in construction and I went for it and you know, thanks to Roger Williams, the relationship and, and, and you know, who they know and the alumni, I got my first internship at a construction company and I knew nothing and that internship was was definitely rough, but you learn from it and you grow. You graduate, you get your diploma, and, and you know a lot more than the competition. Uh, <clears throat> so again, this is an example just from one of our majors, um, but it, this type of uh, thing happens all across the board. Um, so whether it is our business, our marketing um, students that are working um, with uh, business marketing agencies while they're still in college doing internships um, or experiences, uh, whether it is um, students doing research uh, that is going to get published and is going to get shared and is going to end up in the community, um, whether it is uh, creating um, web development projects or apps that help uh, move forward different organizations like the, the small nonprofit I talked about. These are the types of things that we're focused on to make sure that all of you can be prepared. Uh, you're going to leave prepared for the world that follows. Um, so I, we're going to dive into some of the admissions and uh, financial aid information in just a minute, but I wanted to pause for a second and see if you had any questions um, about what I covered so far um, and, uh, or anything else that came to mind. Does anyone have any questions? We dive into the admission stuff about any majors or programs or projects. All right. Well, if you have any questions after two, you can check in with me or Joe or your tour guides as we go as well. Um, but I want to just dive in here to uh, some some information about the admissions process. So the big picture is we recognize you are a whole person. You're not a single number. You're not a single stat. So we take a holistic approach to admissions. We want to look at all of the things that you think uh, really make you special and stand out as a, as a student. Um, so there's a couple of components that are part of our application, uh, but we really want to be looking at them in a real detailed way. So we use the Common application. So you go ahead to the Common app, make sure you add us in there uh, as a school, and that's going to be your method for applying. You do need your high school transcripts in there. And when we look at your transcripts, we actually will take a program-specific view. So if you are thinking about um, engineering, or if you're thinking about uh, um, science, uh, biology, or if you're thinking about um, uh, you know architecture, there may, may be a focus on specific math and science requirements and things. What classes you took there? Um, there's also going to be uh, if you're interested in um, a humanities course, so it might look more closely at writing and, and language skills. Um, we're also going to take into consideration not just the grades but also the rigorous nature of your course load. So um, it's not just the GPA, it's also what classes you are taking in that process. Uh, we're looking for a letter of recommendation, one at least, you can offer more. Um, so I include that in the process. And also uh, there will be uh, an essay as part of the application process. Um, I don't think we had anyone mention any of these majors, architecture, visual arts. Uh, creative writing or dance, they do require a portfolio or an audition. If you have any questions about that, we can talk about it as well. Uh, one thing we don't require is standardized test scores. Um, so we are test optional. So if you don't think that, if you took a uh, standardized test and you think it's a good representation of your skills and your um, abilities, go ahead and submit it as part of your application. Uh, if you didn't take it or you did and you didn't feel like it's a good example, then just say don't consider it. Um, and that's fine. I, about half our students submit them and about half the students don't. And it makes no difference in the admissions process. 
um, uh, who gets admitted and who gets who enrolls. Uh, so it's really up to you in terms of what you think will best uh, show your skills and your abilities as well. Uh, we have two key deadlines. Our early action deadline is November 15th. Um, I, just by a show of hands, I don't think I asked this before. Um, how many folks are juniors in here? Do we have any juniors in here? No, all seniors? Okay. All right. So ac early action deadline is November 15th. Um, so the nice thing about that is you get your application in, um, you get your materials in, you're going to hear about six to eight weeks later. Um, so you actually can hear before the end of the year um, uh, whether or not you've uh, been accepted to the university. So it's a great chance to get that information in um, and get that quick response. Um, and then we also have a regular decision deadline of February 1st. Uh, either one of those, neither one of those is binding, so you do have until May to make your final decision, but you get to have the answer earlier and get to start planning things together. You're also going to hear um, about any merit scholarship award that you might receive um, as part of your uh, application process when you get your admissions uh, uh, letter back. So that's a great chance to get that information sooner, start to be able to plan things uh, going forward. If anyone's interested in our honors program, which provides a great opportunity for more in-depth uh, programming, and classwork, uh, we recommend applying for the November 15th deadline. Um, that gets you in consideration with the full set of honor students. You can apply later. Um, you just might be, uh, have to wait to see if there's actually space left in that honors program. So just get your information in there. Uh, you can indicate that on the Common App, say I'm interested in the honors program. Uh, it'll ask you a few additional questions uh, and that'll be considered. And that's typically for students that have around a, like a 3.7 um, GPA uh, above are ones that are really aligned with the honors program. <clears throat> Any questions on the admissions process that I didn't cover? I just had a question yeah. concerning the letters of recommendations. Is it mm -hmm. preferred that it comes from a, a teacher or possibly an employer? Uh, uh, the, I'm curious more way to... I don't, neither of those give any way, right Joe? I mean really it's generally a counselor's going to submit one anyway, um, but my sort of recommendation to a student is anyone who can give us a unique perspective. So if a counselor's already writing one and a teacher's already writing one, at the end of the day, two or three teachers writing letters, it's likely they all know the student from an academic perspective. I'm gonna glean the same information from each letter. But from a supervisor in a workplace or a community service project or something, that's a unique, a unique perspective. An athletic coach, an advisor from a performing arts group or something like that. Anyone who can tell us something different about you from a different perspective, you're encouraged to write it. And in that case, I mean, I'll read five or six letters of recommendation about a student if they each tell me something different. But, you know, three letters from, a, from a, all from teachers, you know, eventually they kind of start to sound the same. But it's not necessarily that we value one over the other. You know, truly, as long as we're learning about the student, about that person, it's valuable. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes? Typically, if you apply early action, do you find out about merit age earlier, or do you still have to wait until after the regular decision? So you find out about merit-based aid with your acceptance letter. Oh, okay. So you would get a letter, yeah. yep, that would notify you on your missions, and you would get the merit aid with it. Um, and I'll talk about this in the next slide when I talk about financial aid. If you are then applying for need-based aid, that uh, will depend a little bit on when the FAFSA gets filed. But the merit-based scholarships, you'll hear about um, with your decision letter. Yep. Yes? Are all those requirements like, still required for transfer students? Uh, yes, that's a great question. Do you know, Joe? So it's, it's a streamlined process for uh, student transferring in. We actually, we accept a common application for students applying as first-time, first-year freshmen. For transfer students, we actually, though the common app now has a new application for transfers, we actually have our own that lives in our website. It's called the uh, transfer rapid application. And it sort of streamlines all of this down quite a bit. So we, we just require, um, a transcript from every institution of higher education that a transfer student, a transferring student, would have, has applied from, um, and then uh, instead of that letter of recommendation, what's called a college transfer report, and basically it just lets us know about your academic um, and uh, and um, uh, the currency of your standing in the institution that you're transferring from. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Yes. We have this handout on engineering, mm -hmm. and it says early action is November 1st on here. Uh, so we just adjusted our deadlines for this fall. 
um, to to move to. I think we previously had two deadlines for early action, so it's now November fifteenth. Yep. Yeah, it does have yeah. two. One here, November first and December first. Yeah, so that's what it was last year. So now it's just a single one, November fifteenth. Yep. You. you got it. Any other questions? All right. So we'll move to the second part of the this process, which is also talking about financial aid and and. Uh, Roger Williams, we think of it as uh, we want to make sure that you have access to an excellent education, that what you come here and get is going to be really uh, an outstanding experience when you're here, and as I've mentioned, prepare you um, for life after graduation. But it's also equally important to make sure that it is affordable and it is comfortable and that it's something that can work for you and your family uh, in that decision-making process. So <clears throat> our approach to financial aid is also to be very personal and be very focused, and everyone's situation is going to be different. Um, everyone's family situation is going to change and be different and we want to make sure that we put together the right type of aid package that will work for you. Um, there's a couple of key things that are available to everybody. Um, the, the top one that we have there is our four-year tuition guarantee. Uh, that means that the tuition, uh, the first year tuition stays the same for all four years that you might be here. Um, so it doesn't go up three to five percent as it does a lot of institutions. What you pay the first year of tuition is going to be the same every year that follows. Um, and that's part of our affordable excellence guarantee so you can plan and be prepared um, for what, what carries out there. Um, as I mentioned, uh, when you get a decision letter, you would get information on merit scholarships that can range from 5,000 to 20,000. So you have that information right there in hand um, as soon as you get that accept letter. Uh, but there are other options for additional need-based aid. Uh, for Roger Williams, what you need to do is submit the FAFSA, um, the Federal Application for uh, Student Financial Aid, um, which is available in uh, two days, October 1st, right? Yeah, so set your, set your alarm clocks for early Sunday morning to be able to get that. Um, so uh, the FAFSA is available to submit. Um, and if you submit it around the time of application, you, you will probably hear about uh, any need-based aid as part of your package um, within a week or so of receiving your um, decision letter. So we want to make sure that you have all of that information um, available to you. Uh, and that would be in the form of uh, uh, state or federal grants as well as any loan opportunities. Um, and then on campus, we have lots and lots of student job opportunities. Um, these can be work study opportunities here. They can actually be some with community organizations. Um, so they're an additional way for you, for students to be able to cover the cost of college um, and oftentimes get a lot of great experience from that process. I work in the marketing department. We have uh, student um, staff that are part of our work and they're actually doing marketing work for the university, um, whether it's shooting videos or um, writing stories as part of that process as well. Um, so those job opportunities not only provide support for you financially, but can also really help round out your education. Any questions on the financial aid component? All right. Um, so our next steps, we're going to get ready for you to head out on a tour in just a second. But I want to uh, thank you again for coming and visiting us today and I encourage you to come back and visit us again. Uh, throughout this process. We have open houses that are happening uh, in October and then again in November. There's a flyer here that talks a little bit about it. Um, we also have, you can come back and do a shadow visit where you uh, sit in on classes, talk with coaches, talk with faculty members, get to know a little bit more about the program that way. Um, and, uh, and if accepted, you can also come participate in our accepted student days, uh, which happen in March and April, which give you a much fuller understanding of the programs, the experiences that are there. So, Please come visit us again. Keep in touch. We're going to be checking in with you, but you can also check in with us if you have questions um, on the admissions process, on financial aid, on specific programs. We can get those answers for you. Um, and then also we encourage you to, uh, um, the Common App is ready. Um, it's out there, so you can get moving forward on that. Uh, you can also keep track of us on social media. Our RWU admissions pages um, provide a lot of tips and suggestions for um, applying, not just for Roger Williams, but for other places as well. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to our tour guides. Um, they'll tell you who's lining up with who and uh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. just, okay, just figuring that stuff up. They're going to come up here um, and uh, tell you about themselves and then get you out there. And as we mentioned, if you come back, you have questions, Joe will be here. He can ha be happy to answer them. Um, and, uh, and again, thank you for your time. Thank so go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Danielle Dresa. I'm a sophomore, 
I'm a psychology and art double major and a history and French double minor. Hi guys, I'm Jay. Uh, I'm a junior this year. I'm from Towns, Massachusetts. Uh, on campus, I'm part of EWB, which is Engineers Without Borders. Uh, so we're actually going to Ecuador this year to install water filtration systems, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm also part of the American Society of Civil Engineers. I also play on the hockey team and I'm a tour guide on campus. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm a junior. I'm an accounting major with a double minor in graphic design and marketing. I'm from Shrewsbury, Mass. And on campus, besides being a tour guide, I'm the PR chair for uh, Campus Entertainment Network and the Secretary of the Folk Club. Hi, guys. My name is Ava. I'm a senior here at Roger Williams. Very sad to be leaving. Um, I'm from Riverside, Rhode Island, so it's about 20 minutes down the road. Um, I major in biology with minors in public health and chemistry. Um, on campus, besides giving tours, I am a chemistry tutor. I um, do some research in the Marine Natural Sciences Building. I'm working on my senior thesis right now. Um, I'm in the Honors Program, and I work at the Missouri Aquarium Rescue and Rehabilitation Center. So hi, everyone. Last but not least, my name is Courtney. I am from Chester, New Hampshire. It's about 20 minutes north of Boston. I am also a senior this year, a public relations major international business core concentration and a marketing minor. And other things I do besides doing tours on campus, I'm the general manager for the campus radio station 88.3, and I'm also on the executive board of Public Relations Student Society of America. Cool. All right. Good. All right. So, um, so I'm going to be taking Corinne and Brittany, so if you guys want to follow me this way. Yeah. 